welcome back. This is part two of how to make a hill with a box in it. Uh, what I've done now is I've mixed up my uh, polyfiller and I've done four parts polyfiller, one part water, one part PVA glue. And what I'm going to do is now start to apply it to my hill. I'm going to start by filling up all the gaps that I can see in between the foam and then I'm going to try and cover over the actual hill itself and create some sort of texture. Some people use a, a little mix of, um, what do you call it, like sand or grit in their mix of polyfill just to get extra texture. But I've not done that here because I'm going to cover this in static grass anyway, so I want a nice smooth finish to the whole thing. One thing I would say is be careful about coming too close to the edge of your to the edge of your uh, hill there. What, but what you don't want to do is have the polyfiller right at, on the very edge because it will make it far easier for it to chip. So you can go quite close to the edge but just don't make it go over the edge because then when you're actually using it it'll uh, chip and you'll end up with white showing through underneath your nice uh, green and brown hill. You know, really just going to slap the polyfiller on top you know and what the polyfiller is going to kind of represent here is where the turf is kind of overhanging the cliff itself. So you don't want to obscure your nice barky texture too much, but just put a blob on and let it roll over a little. Perhaps my uh, mixture could have been a little thicker, but you know, it doesn't seem terrible. You want to let it roll down and it'll overhang our cliff face quite a bit. And I'm just going to apply this all the way around and I'll get back to you when I've done the whole hill. It's pretty simple really. Right, I've now basically covered the whole hill in polyfiller. <laughs> uh, I filled in all the gaps where the foam uh, pieces meet each other and where the foam meets the MDF. I've also put a, a thin layer of uh, polyfiller over the foam on the slopes just to give them a bit of texture and I've filled in these gaps up here between the places where the uh, pieces of bark meet the foam as well so there's no big gaps in the top I've just let it overhang the edges slightly, just let it run down there in a natural kind of way and that'll just look like the turf overhanging like I said before and it's going to be cool uh, and just like that, it's a new day and the polyfiller has dried. I've noticed a few spots that I've missed here. Just a few gaps in between the foam and the bark where I want to fill these gaps up again. So I'll give another wee coat in a minute. I just want to show you what I've been doing with the lid. And what I've done here is I've actually had a wee slight change of plan. Before, on the previous one that I made, the, uh, the bottom of the lid was held in place with wooden blocks. And you can see they're really rough. But that was just to stop it from sliding about. This time around I was sticking the wooden blocks on and it was looking a bit scrappy. I thought, you know what, I wasn't going to but I've attached the lid with um, magnets. So the lid's magnetised on, it's pretty simple. Just in case of drilling holes in the uh, MDF and super gluing the magnets into place, making sure that they're pointing the right direction because obviously one side attracts and one side will push. And uh, lining it up so the lid fits on and he pressed all magnetised lid. Now that's totally optional, you can use So that's it. the second coat of polyfiller dried. What I'd like to show you what I've done here is if I just bring this in closer to the lid. I actually overlapped the edge of the lid with the polyfiller and then I'm just going to lift it off and it should just break away nicely. And again here, just try to lift it straight up. And that gives us a nice edge around here. It's actually taking a little bit of MDF with it. There's a thin edge. But I'm not going to worry too much about that. You can see there's kind of a line around it. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my sandpaper and uh, sand around the edges of the lid to clean it up a little. I'm going to sand along the edges of the hill itself and around the edges of the board just to take the polyfiller that's gone a bit too close off so that when, like I said before, when it gets little bumps and, and dinks when uh, we're using it in games and things, I don't chip away large chunks of polyfiller off it making white patches. Uh, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to give the whole hill a run over with the uh, fine sandpaper and that's not to take away this nice texture of added. All it is is just to break off any little spikes of uh, polyfiller that's there, any weak points. Just basically test out where the weaknesses are going to be. 
give it a rub over and take away any bits that are likely to break off after uh, I've painted it and put the flock on. Uh, so Just one point to note, when you're sanding polyfiller, wear your dust mask as well because that stuff is pretty unpleasant if you breathe it in. Uh, it is bad for your health, basically. Don't breathe it in. It's not nice. Okay, I've now finished sanding the hill and I've started painting it. What you see here is that I've got, uh, well this is actually two coats of black acrylic using this stuff from the art shop. And, uh, Really the most important thing here is making sure you get the paint into all the deep recesses and cracks. All these bits here where you're likely to have foam showing through, polyfiller showing through, all those little bits of white will really stand out once you've painted it. So you've got to get them covered up now, otherwise it's going to be a lot more difficult to do it later. Not impossible to, to fix it after the fact, but it is really much simpler to... Give this, you know, two or three so, coats. I'm really going to move on to dry brushing now. Uh, I'd be surprised if you've not heard of dry brushing, but maybe you've not. Maybe some people don't know how to dry brush. So I'll do a quick demonstration of dry brushing just uh, for the sake of completeness. Um, so what I've got is I've got my... I've got some white as well. Same stuff. Oh, false. I've got white acrylic as well. Uh, I've got my white and my grey on my palette. And I'm going to mix some together. Sorry, my white and my black. And I'm going to make grey from this mix some together and I want this to be uh, quite a dark grey I suppose. Start off with a relatively dark grey. Now I'm just using raw paint there that's you know completely undiluted so you want that to be thinner than that. I mean like any paint you do generally the thinner the paint you use the better so it wants to be quite watery for this because then you get more coverage where your paint your paint goes further and you don't end up with big thick blobs on the uh, the thing you're painting. So I'll mix up some of that with a brush for far too much. But all you do is uh, wipe the paint off your brush. What? Wipe the paint off your brush? I thought we were going to be painting the hill. No, no. You wipe the paint off your brush until your brush is almost dry. Now if you're painting like um, models and doing fine detail of models and things, like your your actual figures, you'd, you'd want this as very little sign of paint left on your brush at all, but I'm not going to be that So, fussy. now my brush has been dried, it doesn't look like there's any paint on there at all. And you see there's a bit of paper, do that. See, it's got a very sort of fine trace coming from the paper, that's just fine. And then all you do is choose a direction and run the brush over the textured area of the hill that you want to look like rock. And then big sweeping strokes, just run it over like that. Now, I don't know if that's all that visible on uh, on the camera right now. In fact, no, you can see that. That's coming out quite well. I think most of that, what you're seeing there is reflection of the wet area. But really, I'm what I do quite a, you know, quite a lot of this uh, darker shade. And I'm just going to rub it in. Maybe it's just rub it in, but brush it across. And it really is a very laid back, casual method of getting a nice effect on a textured bit of terrain. So let's do that again. I'm going to get some more paint on the brush, wipe it off again with this quite dark grey and then I'm going to go again with a lighter grey and then maybe a third shade lighter again after that and then what I'll do is I'll finish off with white just to pick off the really high bits and then we'll get back to that because I mean I've, there's only so much I can say about this you know it's so dry brushing done. Um, a few things that I didn't say before. When you're doing your different layers of colour, always wait for the your first layer to dry. Uh, so just have a little patience. Do your layer of paint, do your layer of grey, and let it dry before you put your next layer on, like before you go up a colour stage. Otherwise you'll end up with just one big smeared greyness. You won't have uh, different shades of grey. Which is what you're aiming for, because it looks better. Um, what else can I say about it? And again, you know, here, don't bring your dry brush and don't worry if you go all over the place with it. I mean, all this area here, well, this, here this is all going to be painted brown eventually. It doesn't matter if I've dry brushed all over it. That's why we're doing this first, because dry brushing is generally quite messy and kind of gets over everything. But, uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. It seems to work out okay. What I'm going to do now is uh, mix up some paint in a kind of a wash. I'm going to get some really runny black paint. 
to get those, uh, to sort of redefine the re recesses again. Make sure this is really runny enough. I don't want to make a mistake here. When, when you're making up a sort of wash, you can always go too runny. Don't worry about making it too runny because you know you can make your paint. You can wait till it dries and paint it again. So just going to let that run into the gaps, and that should help pick out the detail even further. Okay, so just just like that, all the way down, all the way down. Let it run into the gaps. It's just really watered down black paint. All the way down. And what you want to avoid is kind of big bubbles of paint. Just be careful how you apply it. Just let it run down, run down. And this is just really going to go into the grooves, all the tiny little grooves in the bark, the tiny little details that uh, are there, and just highlight them even more. I don't know if highlight's the right word when you're painting black paint, but that's really what it does. It makes them stand out more than they would. So that's all we're doing here, really. Just a wee wash of black paint. Okay, so... Our wash has dried with a little bit of assistance from our friend the hair dryer and now I'm going to move on to a little bit of colour and just a little bit and for that we're going to use uh, this uh, green paint and that's uh, again just from your art shop or hobby shop or whatever and the only reason I'm using a different uh, make of paint there is just because it comes in smaller quantities and I don't use as much green as I do sort of blacks and whites and browns and things but really there's no difference, it's just acrylic paint Again, uh, so I'll just get some water. You can't see what I'm doing with the palette, but that's not really essential because it's just another wash we're doing here. So a really watered down paint, uh, mixed up. I'm using a, uh, a smaller brush this time for this because it's just in more uh, local areas. And with this, I'm actually going to wipe a bit of the, the, the paint off the brush to start with because I'm not doing whole areas, I'm just doing small areas um, so I've got my paint on my brush and I'm going to choose a little bit and I just want to make a little bit of my rock green can you see that? maybe not, I'll maybe do it over here, it's maybe better so add a little bit of green to the rock, you see? and I'm just going to do that on, not on every single one, on most of the raised areas. This is going to represent a little bit of um, lichen or just mossy growth or maybe where waters ran down over the centuries and created, uh, you know, a bit of colour. And you can see that looks quite nice, at least I think that looks quite nice. It's not going to win any awards or anything, but you know, it's, it just, just, it's a little bit better than the flat grey, you know. And because we're using such watered down paint, we don't lose any of that detail we built up when we were dry brushing. We still get to keep all that. And uh, yeah, I think that looks quite nice. <laughs> 